All right, and uh, welcome back, guys, to episode two of Inside ACW, where, of course, myself and Willow will be discussing last night's show. Of course, this will be episode 24 of ACW Asylum. Of course, Willow, how did you feel about last night's show? Oh, last night's show was amazing. Shockers galore. It was just... Big, big shockers last night. New teams show. last night. Yeah. Well developed. It was really good. It very, was very a must-see show. Definitely a must see show. Of course, guys, the highlights are there this time. You guys can feel free to go back and check them out at your own will. Of course, guys, we jump straight in here to the first match. It was Alex Stryker versus Owen last night. What are your thoughts on the match? I really enjoyed that match. Um, do you know, it was just... It was nice to see Stryker be a bit more on form than he has been previous weeks. But Owen, I don't know what that man is made of. <laughs> yes, Alex Stryker definitely... Definitely was on form last night. It was brilliant. But of course, Owen, you guys, if you haven't seen it yet, Owen did get the win last night. Absolutely fantastic victory of this young man. He is so good lately. He only ever lost one match, and that was his debut. And ever since then, he's just been like, okay, this is it. I've really got to go now. And he hit the ground running. It's been absolutely phenomenal. But as you said, Willow, Alex Stryker definitely been a lot better than recent weeks lately. He's been losing a lot, but he's not been putting out that performance. But last night, he stepped up, and he really brought the fight to Owen. He was he was not messing around at all. What do you think of Alex Stryker's performance? I really enjoyed our, his performance last night compared to other nights. You know, other nights I was like, oh, dude, you know, you can do better. You can see the potential in him, but he just wasn't reaching his own potential mm -hmm. in previous matches. But last night he was on form. He was countering. He was striking back. But just unfortunately, it just wasn't his night to win. I have a question for you, Willow. Um, let's go back to Clash of Fates real quick. Just want to touch this real quick. With saying that, do you think Diamond Allen made the right choice to drop Striker? in favour of Damien Inla in that Clash of Fates match? Yes. You do? I do. Why? I just don't think Stryker was ready. He hadn't really found his own feet and he had I don't think he found his own confidence. He seems to be finding a bit more recently. Hmm. Do you know, with his own performances and his moves, you can see he's getting more comfortable in the ring with the crowd. So I think he did the right thing back then. Definitely. I think he did the right thing as well. But I don't know, Alex Stryker, I think that really knocked his confidence a little bit more. But either way, I don't know, maybe it lit a fire in him because again, he did so good last night. What are your thoughts on Owen's win? Owen's win, it was a great win. I thought at one point, I thought, oh, Stryker might actually win this. I thought Stryker was going to have Owen, he took a bit of a beating at one point, but he just, once he got up and went, nah, you, you've got your your few kicks in, my turn, pal. And yeah. that was it. <laughs> he really did turn it around. Like he, he took that hellacious spear. Immediately, just, I might be, he no-sold that thing. Just got right back up, turned him around, hit the kill switch, it was game over. Yeah, was he like, was just Wah. like, no, I've had enough. You know, you've hit me now one too many times. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that no sell though might affect Alex Stryker? I might actually strive him more to go, oh, you don't think I hit you hard enough with that? I'm going to come next time harder. You think it could be both yeah. of those two? Definitely. Okay. Maybe maybe they could. You never know. Because up next, we had women's tag team action. It was Cassie and Rose of the Twisted Sisters taking on the team of Lorna Gray and Sloan. Willow, what do you think of the match? It was a really good match. I did want to see a bit more from Sloan and Lorna Gray. I just don't think they've found their feet together as a team. Mm -hmm. Do you know, they didn't really bounce off each other as well, and I think they might have underestimated the Twisted Sisters. Oh, underestimate is definitely the word to go with in this one. I think when this match came on, I think I even said myself during the show, do not underestimate the Twisted Sisters. Do not take them for granted. These two are so experienced together. They've been together since day one, and they've went, they've taught through the women's division. I believe now two-time Tag team champions already in the very first short run of this year. And they are just phenomenal. But yet, as you said yourself, Lorna Gray and Sloan haven't really found their feet together yet. But during that match, they definitely did start to get together a little bit. But of course, the end of the match is the key point for me. When, of course, the Twisted Sisters, I believe it was Cassie, made sure she got rid of Lorna Gray. She took her out of the match entirely. Gray was out cold on the outside, leaving Sloan to be, what, two on one at that point? Yeah. And basically turned into a handicap match. But because I'd show the inexperience of Lorna Gray. Sloan Gray, again, she's great on her own. But when you have the twisted scissors on your ass, you, you're screwed. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. What do you think like that? You feel the I same? I think give, give Sloan and Lorna Gray time. I think they maybe need to train a bit more together. Do you know, with the tag teams, you know, train maybe with someone else. Mm -hmm. Do you know, to bounce off, get their maneuvers together, set. Uh, so, but give them time. Like, Lorna is only new. She is still probably adjusting to the fact that there's a massive crowd watching. Yeah, they really don't get bigger. So there's bigger. those little bit of nerves, you know, so... But um, she did She did well. She did put up a fight, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Just, once again, she just got put in her ass. That chick kicked. But 
hey, <laughs> do you know? I think give them a bit of time. I can see great. I can see them really stepping up together. Mm. I definitely would love to see those two teams go at it again. But right now, still so dominant in the tag team division. Cassie and Rosa. There's no stopping. Of course, Rosa already a Grand Slam champion here in ACW, tag team champion. And I got, she may have only held the belt for two days, but it doesn't matter. She held the belt. She what are your thoughts on Rosa? She though? still had the belt. Rosa, I enjoy Rosa. I do like Rosa. I prefer Rosa over Cassie. Really? I don't know, maybe it's the darker look. Mm. Do you know, there's something too cutesy for me about Cassie, but Rosa is like one of those ones that I feel if you're across the ring from her, you're kind of going to be like, oh. Kind of like a, an undertaker kind of, oh, kind of look. You know, you, you just look like you're just going to rip me in half. And, <laughs> you know, if I look at you the wrong way, that's it, game over. Do you know, but I do really enjoy the two different styles that they have and just the fact that they, they can come out and they can get their asses kicked and then all of a sudden go, no, do you know what? We've had enough. It's time for us to kick your ass a little bit. Definitely a little bit. Like I find that everyone kind of does do that. Like When they're on their own, they're not as strong. Yeah, I'm not to lose a little bit when they're on the road, but you put them together, the Twisted Sisters are something... They just know each other so well. They do. They just know, it's as if they just know what the other one's thinking. Yes. As if they just share one mind. I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, let's move on. Next up we have, oh, this was a good match, Isabella taking on the Sorceress Arcana, but of course both ladies had their tag team partners with them. Of course, Isabella with the Women's Inmate Champion and her tag team champion partner, uh, Alexandra, and of course Arcana out there with Melina. Thoughts oh. on the match? This match, it was one of my favourites. I absolutely loved this match. Just the fact that either partners at each ring corner, you know, supporting them on. But Isabella just was like having none of. She wasn't letting Melina intimidate her. She wasn't letting Melina distract her as much as she wanted. Melina probably wanted to. Do you know, but Melina is one of those little witches that you're like, oh, you sneaky, sneaky little sod. Oh, yes. <laughs> Melina was a big, big factor last night. Like, Arcana was part of a great fight, but Isabella was out there, ready to go. She was ready to finish the match in the first couple of seconds. She was she was not messing around, which was great to see. And, of course, Alexandra loving it. You can see on the outside, she was full of smiles all night, watching her tag team partner kick some booty. But Melina, though, she was definitely a big, big factor. Saving Arcana, I counted at least four different times. Four or five times. Distracted Isabella. She distracted the ref. I think at one point she tried to get in the damn ring. She put a steel chair in there at one point. Melina was just... She was the more she was more interesting than Arcana last night. Yeah. I don't like to say that, but you know, she was she was like she was already in there. You know, she was interfering that much. I don't know why the referee did not kick her out. I was just waiting on it. I was like the rest of it she's gonna get enough of going right yeah. you're interfering too much out. But um I do believe that that match wouldn't have lasted half as long if Melina wasn't there. Yeah, definitely would have said. Isabella was just she had a fire on, under her last night and she was just the minute that bell went, she was go. Do you think Malia, sorry, uh, Isabella was trying to maybe prove something to Alexandra last night? I feel like maybe she was, you know, trying to say, hey, I'm still on your level. You may be a main champion, but I'm still your tag team partner, buddy, you know? I think she was trying to go, you may have that belt, but don't forget, I am just as good as you. But is she, though? I think she can. Do you know, last night, her performance last night was the best it's ever been. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Definitely was one of the best. Arcana, though. I don't know how I feel about Kane lately. She's up and down, she's up and down. She's great in tag team action, but her solo run just isn't that strong, as we seen last night. For me, I think she's relying too much on her tag team partner. Relying too much on Melina? Yeah, I agree. Maybe we might see a little bit of a difference in the future, but it's the same way other ways around. You know, in yeah. tag team action, Arcane is usually stronger than Melina, but in solo runs, Melina is phenomenal. So, who knows what's going to happen with those two in the future? But of course, next up, guys, we did... Oh, this. This was my match of the night. Absolutely match of the night. This, guys, is, of course, Team Extreme, Malik and Revan taking on the newly formed D-Generation X in ACW, Damien Inla, and the game Hunter Willow. Hit me with those thoughts. Like, I am <laughs> such a fan of Team Extreme. I mm -hmm. absolutely adore them. But last night, I was like, oh, D-Generation X... I'm enjoying these two in the ring together. Do you know, it was kind of like I was being pulled away from Team Extreme and I was like, no, you know, Team Extreme, Revan and Malik. But at the same time, I was like, these guys together, Damien and Hunter, I was like, wow. I did not expect when I first seen who was the Generation X, I was like, really? These two? Hmm. Do you know, I wasn't sure. But after that match last night, I'm like, yeah, perfect. Yes, they were <laughs> so well together it's like they've been together forever it's like you know? yeah do you know like it's as if they weren't a new team it was like 
hey, we've been a team for like X amount of years, you know. It's, mm. They just meshed so well. Mm-hmm. They flowed so well together. I was like, wow. Surprisingly. Yeah, it was it was a surprise win for me. Definitely. Because I was like, nah, Team Extreme has this. I yeah, was like, like, it's, and halfway through the match, I was like, oh no, I'm wrong. <laughs> like when you look at Team Extreme, of course, those guys, Rev and I, both debuted on the biggest stage of the year, guys. End of days three. And I think they faced, who was it? Leo Anderson and Shelton Rhodes. A very established two superstars, two very mm-hmm. strong cruiserweights. And of course, like that was a no hope for those guys. But they they stepped up that night on the biggest damn stage and got the big win. Mm-hmm. It was a phenomenal win. And I think everybody in the stream and everyone in the show, the crowd was elated. I was elated. You know, it was so good to see. And of course, then they've been so strong together. I think they've earned the tag team championship shortly after that as well. And they've just been skyrocketing ever since. And they're so well together. And of course, last night was the first time they were brought back together in a while. Because Malak went off became the hardcore champion. Revan looking for the inmate championship lately. Un- unsuccessfully, of course. But I believe that last night, they just it was so good to see them back together. They were just instantly on par together. They're like, yeah, yeah high fives at the start of the match. And they were great. There were tags in and out. It was fantastic. But... The skill set of Damien Inler, so young, so fresh in ECW, alongside a very, well, at this point, veteran and Hunter, they were fantastic last night. They were amazing together. I do, like, I thoroughly enjoyed the match because I thought it, won- it was very back and forth. Mm-hmm. Do you know, at one point you're like, ah, oh, no, Team Extreme has this, and then you're like, no, wait a minute. Degeneration X have this, and then you're like, nah, it's back to Team Extreme. It was so, and you were, it just left you sitting going, Who's going to take this Who is win going to take tonight? This win, yeah. And then when Damien and Hunter took the win, I was like, "Oh damn!" That I wasn't expecting that last night, but by they earned that win, they deserved that win. Do you know? But I do feel bad for Revan and Malik because that's probably a blow going or kind of first tag team match back together, mm-hmm. and we lost. But they did put up a great fight. Oh, they were phenomenal. So they should not feel anything. They should just literally go. Do you know what? We need to train a wee bit more together, and we're going to come back and prove that we are a dominant tag team. Oh, I definitely think that's going to happen. I can't wait to see more from both these teams. Like, I think there's something special going to brew between them. If we get anything remotely (laughs) close to last night, then I want to see that, but with the championship around the way. I really want to see more from Damien Inler. I want to see more from Damien Inler. You know, he's a very interesting superstar. Technically, I believe he's only ever lost one match. That was a tag team match. His first tag team match, of course, with Hunter, not including last night. But again, that was against the tag team champion. So yeah. that's that you gotta let that one slide. It's kinda here nor there. It's like, oh well, oh, you were up against the champions. Exactly. So. But uh, of course, don't forget though, Inla is actually undefeated so far in his solo run. How long will that last? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I wonder how long it will last. I'm looking forward to seeing who's gonna stop him. And I know right now a lot of people in the chat, especially during the shows, a lot of people are asking, who can stop this young man? And I don't think anybody can. You know, maybe, you know what we should do? Maybe bring Dive in there. Put Dive in, as if Dive can stop him. I don't think he can. Dive, if you're listening, dude, can you stop your own protege? But he still <laughs> hasn't come up against the likes of, say, do you know, Psychotic Kill himself? Oof. Or Brax. Well, I think it's safe to say the GM, Psychotic Kill, is not allowed after what he did to Renneth. True. So. But, do you know, he still has to come up with the likes of Brax and all them. Ooh. So, do you know, at the minute, it's early days for us. It is. But hey, if he can continue his streak of being undefeated i don't know where this what we're going to be able to do with this young man because no one's going to want to arrest him going, nah, no. you know <laughs> like to me he's he's like we've got Renneth on the shelf right now and that sucks but damien and kind of take seeing that open position and he's just taking that opportunity and running with it and this young man i think after some on the asylum i think he's going right after the inmate title there's a lot of potential out maybe even a tag team run who knows maybe dx will stay together for a while and go for the tag team titles but Inla, I definitely see him being a solo champion very, very soon. Definitely. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is, guys, this this one, I'll give you a little insight on this, right? This next match, of course, is Nathan Henderson versus the World Heavyweight Champion, The Beast, from the East, Dante. Of course, guys, everybody in the chat last night said, no way is Henderson going to survive. Even, I think it was uh, Killer King, aka Cool Guy, said himself, Nah, I'm going with Dante. <laughs> this one's going to be quick. This is going to be brutal. And the only person to vote for Henderson was Willow. Yes. And <laughs> somehow, by the grace of God, Henderson not only survived, but fucking won. Willow, what were your thoughts on this match? I went into that match. When that match started, I was like, do you know what? No, I'm with Henderson tonight. Do you know, he's been really, it's like, since he's won the belt, he's just like, do you know what? I know I'm good. It's like 
getting that belt around his waist solidified his kind of going I know I'm good in the ring I know I can do well I put my mind to it I can go like yes he looked so nervous at the start of that match just before the match uh, the bell rang but the minute that bell rang it was like okay that's it it was as if the audience and everyone else and all us watching we weren't there it was just mm -hmm. all he seen was Dante and he was like tonight you're going down oh definitely <laughs> What about the performance of the Beast last night? I think Dante really kind of went into this match going, I'm basically undefeated. Do you know, I'm not not many people have defeated me. What well, Renneth did. Yes, the, the yeah. undefeated my champion. Yeah, Renneth actually did. Renneth did. So he kind of, I think he went in going, ah, this is going to be easy. A couple of hits and he's down. Then I'm heading, you know, for my coffee or I might teach. God <laughs> the knows. Yeah, off, yeah. do you know. But I think once Henderson came at him, he was like, oh, I think it was too late for him to adjust going, oh, shit. Yeah. Do you know, and he just couldn't really get coming back on him because every time he hit Henderson with something, Henderson kind of was like dusting off the shoulders going, is that all you got? Bang. <laughs> for me, I noticed uh, last night, of course, when Henderson first came out of the ring, he looked terrified. <laughs> and as you said, though, once, you know, obviously Dante, once that match started, Dante was all over. You know, he was just hammering the poor lad. But once Henderson realized, hey, this guy's not as big as he thinks he is. He found that confidence spot and immediately you could see the change in him. He realized he could find an opening and he did. He noticed that he found like a, a weak spot under his arm. It seemed like he attacked the ribs. And once he found that opening, he was just all over him. That was it. Yeah, that was the big turning point for me. And that was a definite confident point for Henderson. And I think Dante definitely underestimated the skills yeah. of Henderson, of course. But I think it's safe to say, I know Henderson is so egotistical and I don't want to boost his ego anymore. <laughs> But he definitely stole the show last night with a shocking, shocking win. But I have this theory, right? This is an out there theory. That whoever holds the MA championship <laughs> is actually the kryptonite to Dante. Maybe. It maybe. may be so. And the worst bit is, there was plans, I believe, for Renneth to go after Dante. Shortly before he was to be injured, after Psychotic Kill injured him. But of course, before that, there was plans for Renneth to go after the World Championship and face Dante and hopefully become double champion. Well, we already know Ren's beaten before. Yeah. So, what would have happened there if Psychotic Kill didn't injure the MA champion? Do you think Ren would have beat him? I think Ren could have. Do you, do you think know, the curse think, is real? I think the curse might be real, but I also think that, you know, with Dante not being defeated as often mm -hmm. as other superstars would have been, it kind of went to his head going, eh. I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable, but nobody. Everybody's touchable in some shape or form. So you're not always going to have your winning streaks you'll have some yes but you're going to come up against someone you're going to underestimate them underestimate them exactly what he did yeah. with henderson you know let's just say dante you're lucky that the belt belt wasn't on the line last night ain't that the you damn truth lost that yes i agree you <laughs> and then i would have felt bad for henderson because i don't think dante would have let that go no <laughs> one question for me though of course is uh how do you think he's gonna fare against alistair oh that's gonna be really interesting i think seeing Henderson beat him mm -hmm. might give Alistair the confidence in himself going well if Henderson beat him I can beat him and Renneth has beat him that's two people that's beat him I can be the third person to do that mm -hmm. so and okay. Alistair's one of the best in the damn business right now yeah I think Dante really needs to keep it in his mind to keep focused and not let his own ego get the better of him yes but I don't know like I look at the size of Dante compared to Alistair but then again you look at the size of Henderson compared to Dante you know but I'm, st I'm still gonna go with the curse that Dante is cursed. He think the belt is his kryptonite. Alistair's not the inmate champion right now, so I don't think Alistair's going to win. I think Dante's going to hammer him at somewhere in the asylum next weekend. But strange things have happened. It is the second biggest show of the year. A lot of big title changes have happened at Summer in the Asylum of the last three shows we've done for that show. So I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. Will Dante still be world champion or will a change cross through ACW. I kind of hope Alistair wins though, I do, because I think it's about time somebody knocked Dante off his pedestal, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I'm really looking forward to finding I out. think the Beast is going to bring the fight that night. Next up, of course, we had the women's Fatal 4-Way Elimination Match. It was Victoria, Chiquita Awesome, Eliara, and Alora trying to fight for the number one contender spot against Alexandra at the uh, Summer in the Asylum pay-per-view. Of course, guys, Eliara became the number one contender last night for the Women's Men Championship. Willow, what are your thoughts on this fatal four-way match? I could have been any happier with the turnout. I was so happy that Eliara finally won. 
Mm-hmm. Do you know, and that she can go on and attempt to get that belt. Do you know, it was just absolutely phenomenal. The women just put on a heck of a show. Yes. Of course, especially in the main event. Like, we don't usually pull women in the main event, but last night I thought, I'll take a chance. And they absolutely tore the roof off the building. It was phenomenal. I want to talk about, first of all, Victoria. This show, of course, went into this undefeated. She won her first debut match. She won a singles match that against Lorna Gray. But she was in there last night with the top dogs. Again, massive opportunity for her last night. But she's in there with some of the best. And I think she did a good job for herself. But I think she went in overconfident. What do you think? I think she let her confidence kind of go too high. Mm-hmm. Do you know, she didn't kind of evaluate the skill sets of the difference in the three women. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, sure, I've been undefeated. I can do this again tonight. You know, I can stand victorious at the end of the night. Mm-hmm. Do you know, and she kind of... Once she got in there and it was three, that yeah. she had three women to eliminate that, it was just, I think it overwhelmed her. Do you think she also went in there without the mindset that, wait a minute, there's actually a lot on the line for this? Yeah, I think she didn't realise what was on the line. Yeah. Do you know, like, I don't think it fully sunk in with her that, do you know, this is a massive opportunity for me. And it just, it wasn't her best performance. No, she not came. at all. You know, but hey, she, as we've stated, she is a rookie. She had a hell of an opportunity, but there'll be plenty more than Oh, the, plenty more opportunities for her. her. Plenty more. Of course, next, this is a shocker one, of course. It was Victoria, of course, eliminated first. Next up, of course, a lot of double teams shortly after that against both Eliara and Chicken Awesome. Of course, all, a lot of these women used alliances. They all know each other very well at this point. Yeah. But Alora being eliminated next really shocked the hell out of me. I couldn't believe this because Alora's been on fire lately. And I thought, she's assuring to win and go right after Alexandra and we would have had a guaranteed bona fide battle for the Women's Women's Championship but Laura was eliminated I didn't see that coming no. to be I didn't see it coming the way it came either no do you know it was like so fast I was it like, was oh. so fast Chica also <laughs> what a performance there but Chica has been recently her performances have been absolutely phenomenal oh yes do you know she has really found found herself found who she is as a wrestler and she's just gone with it mm-hmm. do you know she knows her skill set she knows what she can do she knows what she can take oh yes and she knows how to come back and you know she gives as good as she gets and it's just amazing to see the growth of her from when she started do you know like she wasn't doing so well at the start but it just goes to show just because you're not doing well at the start of your career don't give up just keep striving to be better oh, and she so. is she's doing that she's doing exactly that and now i want to quickly talk on the winner, the new number one contender for the Women's MMA Championship, Ellie Yara. She has had an up and down career so far. She gets those wins, but then once it comes to the championship opportunity, she blows it every single time. I think this time she's not going to do that. I think she's going to go to Summer in the Asylum and she's going to turn up the heat. Yeah. And she's going to potential. I think there's a lot of potential for her to walk away with the Women's MMA Championship, but she is in there with Alexandra. That is not going to be an easy feat. What do you think she's going to do and how is she going to fare? In that battle i think as long as she keeps keeps her cool and doesn't choke because like, i feel like <laughs> <laughs> do you know i feel like in previous title matches that she's been getting close to that she's kind of getting so focused on she's not thinking too much in what she's doing mm-hmm. and she's making those little mistakes that you know she's better at do you know you like what are you doing you've made that tiny mistake but you can do this she's getting two in her own head so i think if she keeps her head clear and believes in herself i think now is her time i think now she's finally ready previous i don't think she was ready you think she's ready for the main championship I now i think she's ready for it i still think alexandra's gonna run roughshod through her alexandra's a tough cookie to be up against she you is. know that you cannot really underestimate her you have to i think if she studies her watches her Does matches her you know and finds her wrestling style and try and counter her own against Alexandra, she might have a chance as long as she keeps it cool and doesn't choke. So Willow, uh, would you like to announce the match type that's officially going to be at Soaring the Asylum for the Women's MMA Championship? Oh yes, I cannot wait, I'm so excited. The match type will be a hell in a cell and I cannot wait. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it right here first off from the general manager herself. That match will officially be a hell in a cell. That is going to be brutal. Of course, no better place to do it than the hottest damn show of the year, Summer in the Asylum. But guys, before we finish up here, we ain't done yet because something big happened right at the end of the show. The Perfect 10 Pro Johnny returned and came out, of course, to address the audience and the ACW Universe. 
and of course announced that he wants to challenge Generation 2 superstars to a ultimate bragging rights match between Gen 1 and Gen 2. Of course, Willow, how do you th feel about this? What are your thoughts on this? I'm excited. You're excited for this? I am excited. It's going to be really good to see who Johnny's going to come with that night. Who do you think he's going to come out with? Oh, there's so many great superstars mm -hmm. that I, I don't want to say certain ones in case, you know, it's not those certain ones or in case it is. But I'm just really looking forward to seeing who he's going to reach out to and go, hey guys, we were the best of the best in Gen 1. Let's show these Gen 2s how it's done. And then I'm really looking forward to see who's going to step up to the challenge for Gen 2, who's going to stand up for Gen 2. It's just going to be so interesting. I oh, cannot definitely. wait. For my predictions, who I think, like Johnny says he's going to bring his own team. So I'm, I'm thinking Johnny's going to bring the Shield. That is, uh, I can't see why he wouldn't bring the Shield. But at the same time, there is other really great superstars from Gen 1 that he has the choice to reach out to if he wishes. Mm, but then you don't get Johnny made a lot of enemies last year. In Gen 1, he made a lot of enemies. Who's really going to stand by Johnny's side now? Personally, I, I think if Johnny's smart, he will bring the shield. They won the um, Ultimate Legacy match together. Yeah. So maybe he won't bring the shield. Maybe he's going to go leave them aside and bring, as you said, some new talent with him. I can't wait next week to find out who he's going to bring in. But who do you think in Gen 2 is going to step up? Ooh. I honestly, I, can't, I haven't really thought too much on who would... Who would have the confidence to kind of balls to go, I can beat Gen 1 superstars, I can beat Hall of Famers, but one that really stands out in my, in my mind for doing that would be Kai Kainan. Really? Yeah, I can. I don't know, there's something, but I can just see him kind of going, hey, I can do that. That would be a big step in his legacy, taking on yeah. a group of Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. There's one man I definitely think who has a serious gripe with Pro Johnny right now, that is Justin Phoenix, aka oh. The Punisher. I can definitely see him being like, no, nah, if anyone's coming after you, it's me. Yeah. I think it's going to be just the Phoenix. I like the idea of Kai k and M, but of course, yeah, as you said before, Willow, this is a t it's probably going to be, it's most likely it's going to be a team of Hall of Famers. Yeah. So that is no easy challenge. No. Whoever's going to step up, I wish you the best of luck. I cannot wait <laughs> to find out. I it is going to be good. I'm so excited for it. It is going to be great, but of course, guys, all that coming up next week. The reveal of the two teams, hopefully next week, will be revealed before the ultimate bragging rights matches. I wonder, will the women step up? Will they be looking to do it too, I wonder? What do you think? There's always that possibility. There is that possibility. The women might go, hey, if the men are doing it, let's show them how it's done. Exactly. You never know, guys. Of course, <laughs> stay tuned for more action from ACW every Tuesday and Thursday live on the Psychotic Kill channel. Of course, guys, don't forget, both myself and Willow stream on Twitch. I stream Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Willow, when do you stream? I stream Wednesdays and Sundays. And of course, guys, you can catch us on Twitter as well. Make sure to follow all our socials. All will be linked down below, guys. And of course, to keep up with us personally, make sure to join our Discord. And most importantly, guys, make sure to subscribe to us here on YouTube. And of course, turn on that bell to get notifications. If you guys enjoyed this mini little podcast of Inside ACW, make sure to share this video with your friends. Of course, guys, get as many eyes on ACW as possible. Again, remember the biggest party this summer coming up in less than a week. Of course, guys, it's literally one week on Saturday. That's technically one week tomorrow night, so I cannot wait for it. But as always, inmates, stay crazy. Stay psychotic. Hell yeah. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.